Hello, welcome to the second part of this tutorial looking at the OSI 7 layer model. In the first part we uh, just run through each of the layers of the OSI stack from the physical layer up to the application layer. What I want to do now is just look at some applications of the OSI stack and uh, match it to some real technologies which are available today. Um, here you see the benefits of having an OSI model and having this approach to uh, layered networking. Uh, you can see traffic would come down from one host from the application layer to the physical layer of the host and then out on the wire for transmission. The router here um, simply works at layer 1 to 3 so we don't need to have the higher levels here. So now you can see which of the uh, layers of the OSI stack are end-to-end are -end in terms of the session presentation application. Uh, we don't need to go all the way up to layer 7 in the intermediate nodes. If this was a homogenous approach um, from say proprietary vendor approach which didn't adhere to the OSI model um, the concept of router may not even be possible uh, so you can see how the OSI approach has led to scalability particularly in the internet today. So now come on to the real implementations of the OSI stack. The most significant implementation today is the TCP IP model. Uh, IP working at the network layer layer 3 and the transmission control protocol working at layer 4. The applications in terms of the TCP stack really work from layers 5, 6 and 7 and there is an example on the right there of some of the uh, the protocols which exist so file, file transmission protocol, uh, HTTP, SNMP, um, that's a mail, mail transfer protocol and management ones such as SNMP, there are many many more and uh, these applications are widely noted on the internet uh, if you want to go and look I'll put some URLs on my website if you want to see what some of the applications are. Another noteworthy thing is the um, the terminology we use. Um, anything progressing down or up the stack is referred to as datagram, but we have more specific terms applied for the datagram at each level. So anything at uh, level 4 is a segment, anything at layer 3 is a packet, anything at layer 2 is a frame, and then it's referred to as physical bits on the uh, on the wire. Of course, uh, TCP/IP is working at layer three and layer four. There needs to be a layer one and two to satisfy it. So here you can see just an example of how Ethernet is applied at layer two, which is running over 1,000 base SX, which is a multi-mode fiber optic um, standard, which is used in the local area network. Just as easily, this could be something that's more appropriate to the wide area network, which would be PPP uh, running over X21. That's typically used in uh, E1 or 2 meg lines. Uh, so this explains the or shows the modularity which is available uh, within the OSI stack. There are other implementations out there. Um, the one you may see, though it's largely redundant now, is the IPX SPX implementation model. This is Novell's uh, implementation of the OSI stack. Uh, you can see IPX is working at layer 3 there with SPX at layer 4. Um, it does run over some similar um, layer 1 technologies, um, Ethernet and Token Ring for instance, um, but there you can see it's a different uh, approach. So that was Novell's approach. Uh, there are other ones. Uh, Apple had their own uh, proprietary approach in the early days called Apple Talk. Uh, the Digital Equipment Corporation had Decknec and uh, also things like Banyu and Vines. They're all very, very much redundant now and all superseded by TCP IP. Uh, but there are others out there and it's worth taking a look on the internet to um, explore some of these legacy options. You do see some of the uh, features um, from these um, brought into the modern TCP uh, implementation as well. So it's just worth making note of some of these other technologies. So really just to walk through how data is transmitted through the OSI stack. Um, the, the, the point is we don't um, modify the data. In this TCP IP model, uh, data progresses down through the application layers uh, 5 to 7. When it hits the transport layer, we place a header on there. That makes the segment. So the data is not changed in any way. It's just encapsulated with a header. Likewise, when it goes down to layer 3, the uh, layer 4 header is, is kept intact, It's just we just put another uh, header on there which is in this case would be the IP layer. 
and then down to layer 2 we convert that to a frame we simply add another header on top of that so if this is an ethernet the entire IP header and TCP header will be encapsulated into uh, an ethernet frame and now that goes on the Y in terms of bits so when it gets to the, tran the receiving end of the, uh, the data link we simply all we need to do is simply just strip those headers off and then pass the, the, the data back um, up the layers up to the application so that's really it from an introduction to the OSI model. Um, I will be doing some more technology primers, which can will look at some of these technology in far more detail in terms of walking through the headers and how they work. We'll, I'll be looking at uh, Ethernet and IP um, and a few others as well. Uh, so I hope you found this useful. Thank you and bye bye for now.